black-faced spoonbill is classified as an endangered species and can only be found in Eastern Asia. As far as we know, they spend the winter in China, Russia, South and North Korea, Japan and Vietnam. In coastal areas of southeastern China, including Hong Kong, Shanghai, Fujian, Hainan and Taiwan, there are presences of the birds year by year. Other wintering sites include the Philippines and Thailand. The current known population of black-faced spoonbills in the world is about 2,000. According to recent year's figures, there are about 250 birds in coastal areas of China, 350 in the inner Deep Bay area of Hong Kong and Shenzhen, and about 1,100 in Taiwan. The presence of black-faced spoonbill is regarded as an indicator of the quality of coastal habitats. Black-faced spoonbill is a large size water bird. They have dark red irises and their black bills are shaped like a spoon. The black bare facial skin covers around the eyes and extends to the throat. That's how they got their name. Inland water bodies, fish ponds, estuarine areas, reed marshes, paddy fields, gaywise, coastal islands and coastal wetlands are habitats for black-faced spoonbills. During winter, their plumage is completely white. The male and female look much alike. In early February, adult black-faced spoonbills will have orange-yellow breeding plumage at the nape and around the upper breast. The skin below the eyes will also turn yellow. All these indicate that the breeding season will soon begin. The temperature turns warm in March and April. The adult birds will leave their wintering sites earlier than the juveniles. They will fly north along the coastal areas or across the ocean. Finally, they will return to their breeding grounds in mid-April. This uninhabited island is located in the northeast of Changsan Chuendao, at the northeastern part of Liaoning province. This remote island is one of the three known breeding grounds of black-faced spoonbill, the remaining two being the islands off the westward coast of the North and South Korean peninsula and the eastern coastal area of Far East Vladivostok Bay in Russia. We have followed this flock of birds which have taken their northward trip from their wintering site to the breeding ground here. We are going to witness the birth and growth of a new generation. On the island, black-faced spoonbills are living with other kinds of birds including black-tailed gulls and Chinese egrets. The island is mainly composed of cliffs and rocks and surrounded by hidden ledges. In mid-April, when black-faced spoonbills arrive at their breeding grounds, they will start to build their nests. Sometimes they will repair and reuse the abandoned nests from Chinese egrets or black-tailed gulls. They will choose to build their nests along the cliffs adjacent to the shore. Sometimes they will nest in the trees along the water's edge. They work hard by gathering twigs one by one and slowly build a nest in the form of a platform. The outer part of the nest is formed by thicker twigs, whereas the inner side is made up of thinner ones. This design allows the nest to secure firmly on rocks. Thick twigs are often in short supply on the island. Black-faced spoonbills have to compete for nesting materials and locations with black-tailed gulls or other egrets. When the nest is built between the end of April and the beginning of May, Black-faced spoonbills are ready to breed. The male spoonbill tries to catch the attention of its targeted female by using his bill to preen the feathers on her head, neck and breast. It seems like she is saying yes. Then the male jumps onto the back of the female, grasping her bill with his and starts mating. This action will last for a short period of time. The process has gone smoothly. After fertilization, female birds lay eggs in one or two weeks. 
Each clutch has about two to four eggs. The spoonbill eggs are white in color and a bit larger than chicken eggs. There are scattered brown spots and parents droppings on the eggshells. Research shows that these help parent birds identify their own eggs. Spoonbill starts to incubate its eggs right after laying the first one. During incubation, blackface spoonbill straddles and sits on the clutch carefully. At regular intervals, they stand up and change sitting position to warm the eggs evenly. To ensure the hatching of the eggs, parent birds take turns to incubate the eggs. Each shift lasts two to three hours. To avoid the eggs getting overheated in hot weather, from time to time, parent birds stand up or squat above the clutch and even spread their wings. In this way, the clutch can be kept out of sunlight and can remain well ventilated with the temperature being kept constant. Sometimes parent birds rotate the eggs with their bills so that the embryo inside is prevented from sticking to the shell membrane, which hinders hatching. All these delicate duties are the innate responsibilities of black-faced spoonbills. In early July, chicks are born. Their plumage is light gray in color and the bill is light pink. Parent birds start feeding the chicks right after their birth. An adult bird brings food back to the nest opens its mouth and allows the chicks to stick their bill into its bill to feed on regurgitated food. Looking for food may not be easy around the island. Sometimes parents need to fly to distant estuarine areas, mud flats or paddy fields for food. It may take quite a few hours. Apart from feeding chicks, parents have to protect them and keep them warm and clean. Young chicks grow rapidly. After hatching, they are several times bigger in 20 days. Their feathers lengthen and their faces become darker. They are able to walk in five weeks. In August, young chicks develop into juveniles. They still need to be fed by the parents, but the parent birds do not pay much attention to them anymore. In general, the adults will not stay in the nest after feeding the juveniles like before. Instead, they will jump onto the rocks or trees nearby to take a rest. And the little spoonbills will walk around the nest, stretching and flipping its small wings from time to time. There is no guarantee that the little spoonbills can grow up safely. There could be unexpected attacks any time from enemies, such as the black-tailed gull, which is always looking out for a tasty meal. This is a real test for adults to protect the family. The juveniles are starting to learn how to fly under the adults' guidance. By September, they are almost as big as their parents and are ready for the southbound migration to wintering sites with parent birds to start a new chapter of their life. Owing to economic and industrial development, many coastal wetlands are being exploited. Some wintering sites have been destroyed, some have even disappeared. The overexploited and polluted environment and the changing usage of fish ponds have contributed to the decrease in feeding sites for birds. That is why, for the black-faced spoonbill to have clean and safe wintering sites with abundance of food supply and proper shelter, a lot of work still needs to be done. Hong Kong Wetland Park provides a safe and suitable place for wintering black-faced spoonbills. Regular field surveys in the park has started since 2003, and the number of black-faced spoonbills recorded is on the increase. The park will monitor their number through regular field surveys, 
and will ensure a suitable habitat for them by measures such as controlling water levels and monitoring water quality. There is still a lot of work to be done to protect the endangered blackface spoonbill. We hope their population will increase so that they can share a part with us living on Earth forever.